Have you ever done this one before? Uh, probably. Mommy, 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 my pigtails are... Back to our stupid directions, you need some Corbin. I'm dumb. And you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you for something. It's so juicy. Want some juice? Mine. Uh, today we reacted to a Vice video. Vice, Vice, baby. Dim, 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 that I have actually seen, so I do apologize. Uh, but I wanted, what? I wanted to react to it with you so we could talk about it. Vice. I don't it's a YouTube channel. Oh. Uh, but it's called Why Indian Fair Skin Business is Booming. It was a really interesting video. Well, obviously, we know that um, the uh, fairness creams in India are huge. Yep. And sadly, yep. obviously. Uh, and they were or still are promoted by Bollywood stars. Yep. Which is terrible. Yep. Um, but so I wanted to get your opinion on the film, on, okay. on the video on as well. On this video. Uh, why India's fair skin? Now, is this going to be a legitimate take or is this a... This is a... Vice is basically a documentary style... Got it. ...YouTube channel that goes and just figures Cover out... stuff. ...different all over the cool. world. Cool. So, we, I think we've done a couple of videos on the channel. Here we go. Huh. That was great. That was huh? wonderful. Uh, Thought-provoking. Very well. Oh. as an acting teacher. Mm. My company comes fourth in Bollywood. So everybody comes. Well, I'll, I'll just kind of be uh, standing next to you. Maybe yes. your sidekick? Yeah, yeah, it's my pleasure. Well, let's get started. Yeah, we'll start. So what types of actors are you, are you looking for? Two main leads, like bride and groom. Hey, baby, where are you? I'm back. I would propose you, but I'm not ready for wedding. So I know he will not get selected. <laughs> what the clients has tell us that he should be five ten above, fair looking. Then why do you call him in? Look. If you need five ten, why are you calling in an actor who's not five ten? Hey baby, I'm home. I mean, I wanna propose you, but I'm not ready for the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. She clearly has never I been in a room. The loop was not going. <laughs> Nothing was not going, nothing was going. So if somebody's a great actor, but they have a dark complexion, will you hire them? Uh, yes, we hire them only if the client says ki, we need a dark of course. complexion. Mm -hmm. What the clients has tell yes. us, we need a fair complexion. Hey, Ravi. Honey, what should we come in? You're going to Trust me. I'm going to propose. I mean, propose me. 
I was thinking about it, but we were all alive. Hey, you just give one minute. इस कंप्लीट स्क्रिप्ट कुछ भी नहीं थी देवर नो स्क्रिप्ट आई हैव रेड द स्क्रिप्ट बट इट वाज परफेक्ट गर्ल इज वेरी ब्यूटीफुल शी इज वेरी गुड लुकिंग एंड द गाय इज वेरी गुड लुकिंग वेरी ब्यूटीफुल ही इज अ परफेक्ट चॉइस बिकॉज अगेन ही इज अ फेयर स्किन सो ही कम्स इन अप मार्केट आई विल कास्ट दिस कास्टिंग इज डूइंग व्हाट दे वर टॉकिंग टू बट इट वाज एक्चुअली लाइक ऑन अ बॉलीवुड सेट the industry perpetuating it. Right. CD is just going to be with their dolls. Hey, pura fire hai, pura bill hai. Sab bol rahe hain, mulla shuru kar. Are you are you the are you love interest in this TV show? Yes. Do you know the title of so, the show? Pop by chance? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what can you got from the title? Uh that he he was made a father by, by chance. Yeah, so that's yeah, all that's, about. Yeah, that's that's about the show. How did you become a pop by chance? So I met with an excellent and I feel the parents. Well, this got dark quick. It's <laughs> like some drama and uh, you know and uh, love interest. Yeah. We were hanging out with the casting director yesterday. He was telling us that in a lot of the casting calls, they'll ask for fair actors. Yeah. And so as a result, a lot of actors will start to use like Fair and Lovely and White Miracle and these products. Oh, that's not true. Uh is that typical though where the people who get main parts are fair skin? No, but uh, you you think I'm fair? I think you're very fair. I really think I'm brown in color. So <laughs> thank you. So. I, I obviously an actor would do. They'll get the makeup done mm. to be fair. Sometimes, when actors are denied parts because of their skin tone, they'll turn to a booming sector of the Indian beauty industry: skin lightening. The most popular products have titles like White Perfect and Fair and Lovely. And are made by the biggest Western cosmetic companies in the world. I don't think they world. sell white perfect anymore. Unilever, Procter and Gamble, L'Oreal, to name a few. Around 60% of women and a growing number of men in India say they use these creams. And the way they sell off the shelves, they hire Bollywood's biggest stars. This is India's Don Draper, Kailash Surendranath, who created many of these ads, and Anupama Verma, the former face of Fair and Lovely. Now, what is happening actually is in the country. Uh, psychologically, is that uh, maybe it's a hangover of the British Raj, mm. but generally a fair complexion is looked up upon, but the dark complexion is not so looked upon. So especially for marriage. What was sort of your standard storyline for these advertisements? An arranged marriage is being fixed. The boy comes to see the girl. Maybe finds her too dark. The next time she's just fair and lovely, another boy comes to see the girl and marries her. Prerequisite to get married. <laughs> the scripts used to be standard very and very weird. Like it was always about you can't get a job unless you're fair. Yeah. You can't get married unless you're fair. As a model, I was cast because I was fair, not because I was really using the product. The Indians they feel fair and beautiful. Everyone's so beautiful. If you see the matrimonial ads, it will always it won't say. Beautiful, educated girl. They always say, "Wanted, fair, intelligent girl." In fact, you know, a lot of people uh, give this with the dowry. They give her saris, they give her, uh, you know, whatever jewelry yeah. and stuff which she's going to take with her, and the fairness cream. Was there a moment when you both felt like maybe I should stop endorsing this stuff? Well, when I did feel that way, I stopped. I decided not to sell stupid scripts, you know, which promise. Or is the world to you because you're fair? That, that's just I think that's in Indian like um, you know little hangover over the West is because they feel fair and beautiful. Fair, they think that's beautiful. Having to fit into a cultural definition of beauty to be a movie star is not an unfamiliar concept. Hollywood basically invented it, but skin color bias permeates all layers of society here, <coughs> and is causing some women to go to extreme lengths to become lighter. Her skin 
flame burning? Uh, no, this is the carbon. The carbon. The carbon. Yeah. What I'm doing is I'm hitting all these carbon particles with the laser. So what it does, it will go and hit the melanin. When the hit, melanin is hit, it will get destroyed. Mm -hmm. Then the patient will feel a sense of glowing and a brightness on the face. So it basically so it destroys that. Destroys the pigment temporarily. How popular has this treatment been? From last year, there's a 100% increase in the number of people who are coming in for this treatment. Wow, you've seen a 100% growth in this part of your yes, business. Yes, in this part of your business. And Neha, um, how did you decide to, to get this treatment? You know, if you're applying to a job, will an employer say, I'm sorry, you're you're too dark? Do you feel a sense of guilt for, in some ways, perpetuating that narrative? Yeah. Yeah, you feel that it's not the right thing which you're doing because she is beautiful as is it. I'm not helping her getting a job, but that is what the industry demands. Celebrities endorsing these products, commercials broadcasted to hundreds of millions of people. I don't to like it. She's beautiful as she is. It goes back to but I'm going to do it because that's what the industry Kavita demands. Kavita Emanuel has been working to change this for years with a campaign Stop called that. Dark is Beautiful. This is a belief that is embedded deep in our minds. It is part of our culture. Where did this all begin? I think there are several reasons as to why we have this issue today. And, um, and people, especially here in India, people always ask me, is it because of colonialism? And then there is the caste issue, of course, we have. And the general belief is that the higher up you are in the caste system, you are lighter. Mm. It's the whole idea of the ruler was white. Is this just sort of in certain parts of society every now and then, or is this something that people face every day? There are things that we do at home every day that tell you that we are biased when it comes to skin color. When a baby is born, um, in India the first thing, of course people want to know if it's a girl or a boy, but then the next thing people look for is the color of the skin. When, just when the baby is born? Just when the baby is born. From day one, parents start speaking negative stuff about the baby's skin color. So just imagine how the child grows true, up. Yeah. I saw how it affected the confidence level um, in girls. That really kind of shocked me. I thought, wow, this is a big issue and no one's talking about it. Campaigns like Emmanuel's have helped to spur others to join in and speak out. A youth group called Kranti is helping young girls reclaim their self-esteem. I love my skin. It's brown. I'm brown. Orangish. My mom gave me this and I'm proud of it. Kranti operates as a home for daughters of sex workers and their mission is to empower their girls to combat class and skin color discrimination. It's not about a society, it's your own family who has been starting blaming you since a very young age. My mom has always been like taunting me for saying like, you are so black that you won't ever get a guy, you are so black you won't ever get a job, do this, use this cream, use this homemade remedy just to look brighter. I'm like, why? Why can't I feel beautiful the way I am? How many of you have used a skin lightening cream? When I look back, I used to apply creams and eyeliner, all those things to look beautiful. My school days have always been like crying about myself. I could still see, see myself being a 12 year old girl, standing in the front of mirror, saying shittiest words I could even imagine. Like, dude, you are not beautiful. Like, look at you. You are a piece of shit. Like, those words hurt. It's out there every day, in your face. It's on the television, every other product is talking about whitening your skin and we've seen how it affects children. We are a diverse nation with diverse languages and ethnicities. I think we should look forward and see why are we still entertaining this um, toxic belief. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why I wanted you to watch it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's not new. I knew of this yeah. and I do know like those girls talking about um, their experience, I know it firsthand from stupid babies who've messaged me and I've communicated with, as well as people I've gotten to know through Indrani. Mm. 
Um, and it's also not a coincidence that the majority of the people who are facing this issue, uh, there's a few that are male, but the predominant ones are women. Women, yeah. Yeah, because beauty is all that matters. Of course. And yeah. you're not beautiful if you're not white, apparently. Exactly, and it's, it's no different. It is different because it's just 100% pure racism. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's the same pressure. It may be even bigger pressure than what women face here as far as having to maintain youthfulness. Whereas there's a different, the, you know, men are said to get better looking as they age. And yeah. then women, you know, if they look like they're over 40, then they're no longer bankable. Yeah. And I don't know what the industry is like in India in terms of the whole movement of change. It is changing here. And there's a, a big it has movement. been a big change here. A big movement big for change. loving yourself. Yes, but what body type, race, skin, gender, age, all of it—it's loving, and that's what it should be. Yeah, you should love yourself, and no one should talk down on you for anything. Uh, so I don't know. I'm hoping that uh, it's kind of moving, and I know there are some advocates like uh, Topsy and the uh, Kangana, and and I know. Pranka was in that. I believe I heard she denounced it, and she doesn't do that anymore. Do that anymore? No. I can't say for sure. That I believe that's what I heard. And Kalki's pretty yeah, outspoken yeah. against it. Same, same thing. Which is difficult because Kalki just naturally is fair. Yeah, you know. Yeah, she's basically <laughs> white. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping it is changing like it's changing here. Well, because none of those. If those cranes were sold here, they would be uh, oh, a, a people destroyed. would be freaking out. But like at the if same, if you had something that said "white perfect" on it and it was makeup, your business would be shut down the next day it, it, because that's be racist. racist. <laughs> but but we have, we have our own things that are equally as okay. damnable. There's racist stuff in makeup that's still here in America. Correct. Like the fact that there's hardly any uh, makeup for darker skins; it's mostly all for lighter skin. So it's absolutely it's not as abrasive. Augmentation is the big thing here. Mm -hmm. Women here are constantly augmenting their appearance, whether it's to make their boobs bigger or smaller, or their butt bigger or smaller, or to make their face less wrinkled, and they inject stuff into the wrinkle line. The, the wrinkle lines, guys do it too. Mm -hmm. There's just, but at the same time, there has been great, huge progress in terms of accentuating the things that make you different. In fact, I can tell you from our experiences as actors with casting calls, mm -hmm. um, the word of the day for years has been diversity. Yeah, we are no longer yeah. what used to be the number one castable thing in film. We are actually the minority now because what they want are diverse and unique. They don't want. When I was a kid, you got to get braces. You know, you you got to have straight teeth for the camera. And today, it's like, no, no, no. Keep the space between your teeth. Keep mm -hmm. that scar on your face. But there's still a long way to go. Yeah, and that's what I don't think we want to talk about. Then is the fact that casting calls have race is not new. No, that's that's actually common. They and they have to do that because. Uh, to a certain extent, not <laughs> that is like extreme saying only fair Correct. people is not okay. Right. But the fact that it says black or Hispanic or even black beast, yeah, black gangster looking male, muscular, yep. that's very common for a casting call to <laughs> just say that. Acting is really the only job <laughs> yeah. that definitively can say in the hiring process. Mm -hmm. Must be obese. Mm -hmm. Need ugly person. Yeah. Um, need you to look like a rapist. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah. So that's true. But this this whole um, predominance of fairness, mm -hmm. and I agree from what I've learned culturally, is it's the combination of things of, well, the, the whole caste and colonization thing is the same thing. And this existed prior to any of this because from ancient times, the uh, thousands and thousands of years ago in all over the world in recorded history, the people who were um, fat and pale were the wealthy because mm -hmm. they weren't working and they weren't in the sun. Yep. The skinny brown people were usually the, the ones working outside. They were the help, they were the slaves, they were the workers. So if you had fair skin and you were chunky, that was attractive because it meant that you were wealthy, meant you were in the higher level of the economic spectrum. And there's just been something that has been pounded into the minds of people culturally in every society. And it's clearly still a predominant thing in India. Yeah, and, and that's it's awful. And I hope that nobody feels like they have to use that. Uh, and it's sad because they, they, they showed he has jobs because people can't get jobs because of their skin. Yes. Like, that's racist. And it's 100% yeah. racist. That's just like when uh, in America, when if you were black, you couldn't get a job 
because you're black. That it's is racist. just as bad and race. just as racist. It is. And that, um, what, what that guy said about not liking it, but doing it because it's what the industry demands is terrifying to me. Yeah. Um, and the, like, I remember, remember when we, we did something like this and I did a little video about You Are So Beautiful. We had watched yeah. something, our first exposure to this. Yeah. And I remember uh, Indrani sending me some pictures of actresses. And uh, she'd send me some pictures of, of dusky is the way they're described, they're more brown. And I'm looking at these pictures of these women and she's like, yeah, they, she doesn't get a lot of work because she's not considered beautiful. I go, what do you, like those girls, the, the girl who was getting her face done, I'm like, why would you want to change that? Yeah. I'm wondering if that's why it took Nawazuddin so long to break into the industry. I was thinking about him. Because obviously he's male, so it is all, it's different. Obviously. It's a totally different standard. Totally different thing. I can't, I don't even know if I can think of you can't. a mainstream Bollywood actress who is as dark as Nawazuddin. You I mean, can't. Uh, there aren't any. I'd have to. I'd have to Forget think. mainstream. I don't think we've seen any well, actresses. Yeah, we have. Where? In the South Indian films that we've seen. Okay, that, okay, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking, I was thinking purely. But Bollywood, I, I, it's hard yeah. for me to think of. Um, but I'm wondering if that's why it took him so long, because like I get casting director said, he's like, he, he was good, but he's too dark. Yep. Um, which is, which, which is, is terrible that his talent would be overshadowed. By <laughs> was he, was his, in most of his early work, was he cast as the villain? And he still casts as the villain. Yeah, probably. Probably because he wants to as well. Well, he, now he has choices, yeah. but it wouldn't surprise me if the predominance of the things he was submitted for was the bad guy. Because the hero isn't going to be that dark. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. And it's it awful. Just, it's, and it is. It's, it's, it's awful. It um, is. And, it, and this isn't an excuse, but, you know, I was raised it, with, with both of my parents. They divorced when I was seven, but they still communicated the same thing to me. I don't even know when I learned about racism mm -hmm. existing in the world because, because to my parents, it was a, the difference of people's appearances was a celebration of the creativity of God and nature, mm -hmm. the diversity and the beauty of creation, mm -hmm. not being identical yeah. and that the individuality of every person is as beautiful as the individuality of every snowflake mm -hmm. in their structure and their design. And I, I, Growing up, I, that was my atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. A lot of these people are growing up in atmospheres where they were told from the young, like that girl's parents, I'm sure was told from the youngest of ages. It's usually the parents. The parents taught them that dark skin is bad. I've, I've heard things about the fact that like an Indian, Indian parents who if they found out that their daughter had fallen in love with somebody who was black would be disowned solely because they knew the kid would be so dark. Skin it's, color. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like because no way you cannot have you can't you can't have somebody you're with with darker skin than you because that means that your kid could have pretend. You need yeah. you need to get lighter with the generations. With, with evilness and 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 racism and stuff like that, it's taught and it's usually taught sadly from from parents that that even if they don't think they are like evil or bad, they're teaching their kids racism. And so, like my son, he he the kids are pure and innocent. They need to be taught evil. And that's when people are bad. <laughs> yeah, and if... Like, I have a very bleak outlook on, on humanity alone. That's just because of how evil people are. <laughs> but kids, they're innocent until they're tainted. And I know it's easy for us to say, well, here's two white men. Yeah. You know, uh, but any encouragement I'm we can white. give... Uh, you I'm are Irish. Yeah. <laughs> um, any encouragement we can give, they, we know right now, watching this are a lot of beautiful girls mm -hmm. who are brown skinned and you've been told. And boys. And boys, yes, thank you. And you've been told by your mom and dad that you won't find anybody to love you and you won't get a job because you are ugly simply because you have brown skin. But deep down inside, you know that isn't true. It doesn't make it hurt any less because it's coming from the people you want the affirmation from and should be getting it from the most. Mm -hmm. Anything we can do to engender in you a sense of the fact that that is a lie and affirm the fact that you know it. And the reality is you are probably gorgeous <laughs> just the way you are <laughs> and get to the place where you don't need the affirmation of anyone else, but that you can look in the mirror and know that God made you that way. And that's good enough. Mm -hmm. So 
that love you yourself a, and yeah. stop being racist. racist. <laughs> yeah, great shirt. I wish I could stop being racist. How I about that one? Tell you that to half of our country as well, but uh, yeah, sadly, they're not watching this. No, nope. <laughs> love one another. <laughs>